Hi, boys and girls. I hope you had a great weekend. And guess what? It is the last week of school. Can you believe it? I bet you're thinking like me. I never thought the school would end like this. I miss each and every one of you, and I look forward to seeing you in the fall. And this week also is the last week that you're second graders. So how about that? At the end of this week, you will be a third grader. Wow. You've accomplished so many things, and you should be so proud of yourself for doing so great. So I have a few things to share with you. Let's go to the next slide. So uh, since this is the last week of school, I wanted to give you some extra work that you can do to really help you be prepared for third grade. I will practice a lesson with you, and then you can begin to do the other ones that are on the slideshow. I really hope that you do take time to do this because like we've said before, how do you become a better reader? By reading, that's right. And not just reading without thinking because we know reading is thinking and thinking about the text. So you're gonna have some uh, passage, a little reading passage, and then you're gonna have some questions to answer. For this slideshow, it is all nonfiction. That means that it's not false, it's real information. So I think you'll really be excited about the passages and then you'll get out a piece of paper and you'll just write the answers. Let's practice it together. So let's do one together. Obviously, put your name on your paper. There's my name and there you have the date, which is today's date or whatever date you do this on. Now. What's really important to do, students, is before you read the text, read the questions. That will set a purpose for your reading. And you might go, oh, I remember that was one of the questions, and that'll help you. Here it says for directions, do a closed reading of the text. That means we're looking closely at the text as it relates and connects to the questions. It says underline or highlight the correct information. I'll try to do some of the underlining, but I'll tell you what, on the computer, Mrs. Dossel is not that good at it. You, know, you would probably be much better at it. All right, let's look at the question. What type of animal is a giraffe? Hmm. You know what? I know what type of an animal is. I'm going to write my answer. No, can't do that. You might have what you think is the right answer in your brain without even reading the text. But these questions are text-based. That means that your answer has to be based on the reading. So don't answer a question that you think you know from your head. Number two, where do drafts live? Same thing. You might think you know, but don't answer it until you, your answer matches the answer that's found in the text. Three, what is a plane? Well, I know of what a plane is. A plane is what goes up in the air and flies. Well, guess what? That's um, a different kind of plane. Another reason why you really make sure you read that text first. And how do long necks help giraffes? All right, let's read the text. And I'll underline what I think um, might be the answer if I come across it. Giraffes. Giraffes are mammals. Um, like other mammals, and we're just gonna read first, they give live birth to their young. Giraffes live in the open, grassy plains of Africa. A plain is a place that has flat land. They have long necks to get food. Animals have tools that help them live in a habitat. A long neck helps a giraffe live in its home. Its neck helps it reach tall trees. So now we're prepared to answer the questions. What type of animal is a giraffe? If you saw it, when I read it, you are right. It says it right there, giraffes are mammals. Very good. What well, I also like to do students is since that, what I underlined answered question one, I'll put a little one and then I'll circle it because that'll help me know that I went to, um, that I found the answer there. 
and then we're going to answer it. Remember, students, you must answer in complete sentences. You know that that has, begins with a capital letter and ends with an end mark. So what type of animal is a giraffe? If you just put mammals, you didn't answer the question correctly because mammals is not a sentence. Giraffes are mammals is. Now I know what you're talking about. So your answer should have been, giraffes are mammals. Good job. Let's look at number two. Where do giraffes live? Well, they live in Africa, right? Or how about the zoo? Well, let's look at the text. Live, live. That's what I like to do is I take a key word from the question and I just kind of scan. Oh, I see it here. It says giraffes live in the open grassy plains in Africa. All right, here goes my attempt at underlining. Woo. Okay, that's a mess, but I'm gonna leave it there, okay? So I'm gonna use that to answer the question. And I can put a little two out here. All right. Where do giraffes live? Don't just put Africa. Giraffes, giraffes live in Africa. Good job. And then what is a plane? Well, I'm going to go back up and I'm kind of scan for the word plane. Hmm. Oh, there it is right here. Let me see if it tells what is a plane. A plane is a place that has flat land. Well, I'm going to underline that because it's telling me what is a plane. And I'm gonna put a question three by it because it helped to answer question three. My paper looks pretty messy, huh? That just means that you're working your brain. So what is a plane? I would put a plane is a place that has flat land. And now question four, how do long necks help giraffes? Long necks might be the key word I'm looking in the passage. Let's see, long neck. There's long necks right there. It says they have long necks to get food. So that's one way it helps them. It goes on to even tell you, doesn't it, how the long neck helps a giraffe live in its home. Its neck helps it reach tall trees because that's where their food is. So students, I would underline, they have long necks to help get food and a long neck helps a giraffe live in its home. There we go. And even its neck helps it reach the tall trees. So there are several sentences about that one question. So then you try to put it in um, a sentence that com tells the complete answer of how do long necks help giraffes? And we put giraffes long neck helps it get food by reaching tall trees. Good job, students. I see that you answered, we did together, answer the questions in complete sentences, beginning with capital letters and end marks. And always remember, students, if you are writing words that are found in the text, those words must be spelled right. Because the only reason they wouldn't be is that you're lazy. And I know you're not. So what hope is, is that you'll continue to do these um, text-based questions through the summer. And you'll be ready for third grade. So here would be the second text-based article to read. It's called On the Move. One thing I forgot to tell you that's really important is you can check your own answers to see if you got it right. If you go to the very end of this video, you will see that the answers are there for you. Now, remember, I'm not grading these, and um, but you have the opportunity to really try to make sure you're ready for third grade and that you won't have any reading problems when you get there. So you have to be self-motivated. That means that you want to do something to, so that you reach a goal 
and that you complete it and then you're ready. So answer these questions on these articles. You can do one um, every other day or, you know, one on Monday, another one on Friday, or you could do Monday, Wednesday, Friday, whatever you choose to do, but set a goal of what you're going to do. And then just on paper, stop where this, where the next article's at and write your answers and then go to the end and grade them. And what's important is um, that you're not really grading them, you're checking the answer. But if you didn't get the right answer, I mean, that's, that's okay. You're supposed to be learning. But then look at the answer and maybe you can find out why did you not get that right answer. Go back in the article and look at it and you probably will make the connection. Oh, I know what I did wrong, right? So let's see who can do this. Who will actually be brave enough and set a high goal for themselves in getting some of these done. I know that your mother or father or grandma, grandpa, and all of us at Medivie Elementary are proud of you. So keep up the good work, boys and girls. Oh, I also forgot to tell you, boys and girls, I'd still love to be able to write letters back and forth to you. I promise if you send a letter in um, to me and I get it in my mailbox, there's the address right there, I will send you back a letter and maybe a little surprise with it. I'd love to talk to you any way I can. Also, you can email me on my email address. Maybe you just need to talk. Maybe you need to share about a great day or a not so great day. Just know I'm here for you. And again, I cannot wait to see you soon. Bye-bye.